Welcome to Magnifica TV News, dedicated to offering the news of the Church. Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022, and these are our news. The Pope has empowered the superiors of the religious congregations to expel those who commit certain crimes. Cardinal Pell has asked the Pope to intervene to put a stop to what is happening in Germany, which endangers the unity of the Church. The decrease of Catholics in Latin America is accelerating, while the presence of Protestants is strongly increasing, and the numbers of atheists is also growing. The Secretary of the Spanish Episcopate has regret that the government investigates pederasty in the Church due to the almost non-existent numbers of cases in the Church. The Wall Street Journal has called on the Supreme Court in an editorial to repeal the law that makes abortion a right. Superiors of religious congregations will be able to expel those who commit certain crimes, such as pederasty. The pontiff has signed a new motu proprio, modifying the procedure for superiors of religious congregations to act in case of abuse committed by one of their members. A religious is to be dismissed from an institute for the offenses mentioned in Canons 1000. 395, 1,397, and 1,398, unless, in the case of the offenses mentioned in Canons 1395, paragraphs 2 to 3, and 1398, paragraph 1, the major superior considers that resignation is not entirely necessary and that provision can be made in another way, both for the correction of the religious and for the reinstatement of justice, or for the reparation of the scandal. Canon 1395 refers to clerical offenses against the Sixth Commandment and states that if the offense has caused scandal and has been committed publicly, it should be punished with just penalties, not excluding expulsion from the clerical state. Furthermore, it refers to the cleric who, by violence, threats, or abuse of his authority, commits a crime against the Sixth Commandment, or forces someone to perform or suffer sexual acts. Canon 1397 refers to cases in which the cleric commits homicide, or abducts or retains a human being with violence or fraud, or mutilates or seriously wounds him, he must be punished, according to the gravity of the crime, as well as one who has procured abortion, if it occurs, incurs late sententia excommunication. Canon 1398 deals with the crime against the Sixth Commandment of the Decalogue, with a minor, or with a person who habitually has an imperfect use of reason, or to whom the law recognizes equal guardianship, as well as the case of one who obtains, preserves, exhibits, or divulges in any way and by any means pornographic images of minors or of persons who habitually have an imperfect use of reason. Cardinal Pell considers that the Pope cannot remain silent in the face of the threat toward the schism of the Catholic Church in Germany. Cornel Pell, in a new interview, lashed out at the dissident drift of the Church in Germany and said the Pope will have to speak out against the pro-homosexual synodal way and reaffirm Catholic teaching. No doubt the Holy Father will speak. He will have to speak out on this issue to clarify and reiterate tradition, he told Dr. Gavi Neshenden, a convert to Catholicism and former chaplain to Queen Elizabeth II, 
on the Catholic Herald's Merli Catholic Podcast Thursday. The Catholic Church, unlike the Orthodox and Anglican communions, has an instrument that we believe is ordained by God. Peter, the rock man, Colonel Pell said, special role of the papacy is to maintain the purity of the apostolic tradition and to maintain the unity of the Church around that tradition. The Australian Cardinal strongly condemned the German Synodal Way, a process launched in the midst of the clergy sexual abuse crisis in Germany that seeks to revise Catholic teaching, including female ordination and sexual morality. The bureaucrats who dominate the Synodal Way and most of the German bishops, Colonel Pell said, think that by adopting the teachings of the world around them, they are going to help the Church. They are going in the wrong direction. They are making a bad situation worse. It's not just about agreeing or disagreeing with the Catechism. It's about whether you believe we are under the Apostolic tradition or we are its masters, the Australian Cardinal said. Do we feel free to reject the teachings of St. Paul, which was obviously the opinion and practices of Jesus, an almost anonymous tradition, not only among Jews but among Christians? He continued, Do we feel able to do that, or does revelation, the teachings of Jesus and the apostles, have a special authority for us? He asked. Catholics are decreasing in Latin America, while Protestants and atheists are growing. The percentage of Catholics in Latin America has fallen from 70% to 57% in 10 years, which is a rapid and alarming drop, while the numbers of evangelical Protestants are increasing. The number of atheists has also increased, and is now close to 20%. According to recently published research covering the years from 2010 to 2020, the most drastic declines were in Guatemala and Venezuela, with decreases of 14% and 13% respectively. In total, the percentage of people belonging to the Catholic religion decreased from 70% in 2010 to 57% in 2020. In contrast, the number of Protestants increased from 3% in 2000 to 18% in 2010, rising to 22% in 2020. The most notable increase occurred in Guatemala, where it advanced in the same years from 19% to 34% and 41%. Out of 15,000 cases of pederasty in Spain, only 69 are due to declaring it. In spite of that, it is only the Church that is going to be investigated by the government. Bishop Luis Arguello, Secretary General and spokesman of the Spanish Episcopal Conference, has confirmed that the bishops will not be part of the Commission on Sexual Abuse within the Church in Spain, which is chaired by the Ombudsman Ángel Gabilondo. In the press conference that took place at the end of the plenary, Bishop Arguello affirmed that there is total unanimity among the bishops on the implementation of the audit commission to the law firm Cremades and Calvo Soleto, criticized in some media for some of the lawyers being opus dei. The prelate, to a question about whether the Church will open its archives on abuse cases, explained that any decision will be taken in accordance with civil law, canon law, and especially the law of data protection, which obliges everyone. And he added that, in his personal opinion, what can be found in these files is overestimated. For the bishop to carry out an investigation into abuses in the church when the attorney general of the state himself says that of 15,000 open cases in Spain, only 69 affect the church, is a surprising decision, especially because there is no investigation of where the rest of the abuses, which are practically all of them, come from. The world's leading business newspaper has called on the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn the ruling that made abortion a right. 
The Wall Street Journal has published a strong editorial urging the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, which made abortion a right, and allow voters to return to protecting the lives of unborn babies. The newspaper's editors said the court has an excellent opportunity through Dobbs v. Jackson, Women's Health of Mississippi, to correct its 1973 abortion ruling and return the controversial issue to the people. Since 1973, Roe has forced states to legalize abortion even when the fetus could live outside the mother and has allowed abortion up to birth. However, in December, the Supreme Court heard a case from Mississippi that directly challenges Roe and the subsequent abortion ruling Planned Parenthood v. Casey. In the Dobbs case, Mississippi lodgers asked the High Court to overturn Roe or, at a minimum, allow states to protect unborn babies from abortion before 15 weeks, as most countries do. The judges are expected to issue a ruling this summer, and many believe the conservative majority will grant Mississippi's request. The editorial asserts that it is time for the court to return this issue to the people. Since 1973, more than 63 million unborn babies and hundreds, perhaps thousands, of mothers have died in supposedly safe and legal abortions. If Roe is overturned, more than half the states would restrict or ban abortions, and hundreds of thousands of unborn babies' lives would be saved from abortion each year. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting the loss of the Western values in what is considered the West. The war continues in Ukraine. Bombs continue to fall, destroying buildings and taking human lives. Ukrainians continue to flee their country. It is said that there are already more than 12 million who have had to leave and are in refugee status. But in the meantime, some companies of the countries supplying arms to Ukraine and even some of those countries are already negotiating with Russia to sell them their products or to buy gas from them. It is as if the dreadful tragedy of the war was gradually ceasing to be news and the West was Getting used to it was assuming that Russia is going to win because it is stronger and Ukrainian is going to lose because it is weaker. But what is the West? I think that's the big question, the fundamental question. What is the West? We could clearly say that the West is not a geographical term because in that case, for the United States, the Westerners would be the Chinese, for example. The West is a cultural, spiritual concept formed in Europe by the union of three great intellectual and religious spiritual currents, the classical Greek thought, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, the pre-Socratics, the Roman law, the Lex, the Roman law, and also the indispensable contribution of the Judeo-Christianity. Thus, a Western country or a Western person is the one who assumes these three concepts is the one who assumes that truth is important, that the search for truth is essential for the human being. Greek thought is that which assumes that before the law we are all equal, including the weak, is that which also assumes that the supreme commandment for us to be true human beings, is that of love, including forgiveness, whose unsurpassable manifestation was given by our Lord Jesus Christ with his life, with his teachings, and with his redemptive death. Is the West 
Western? We have to ask ourselves this question, otherwise we may not understand what is happening in Ukraine and what is being discussed there among other places. Is the West Western? Let's see. First of all, the thought. Truth is no longer sought. In many places, people have stopped studying philosophy. Truth is no longer sought. The freedom that is exalted above all, especially after the Enlightenment in the 18th century, freedom has been separated from the truth, while according to one of those sources of the West, Christianity, according to our Lord, it is the truth that will set us free. It's being cut off from thought, and it's being cut off from thought by the introduction of that cynicism which was perfectly reflected in Pilate, that cynicism which is relativism. What is truth? What is truth? In the debate between our Lord and Pilate in the Praetorium, Jesus speaks of truth and Pilate, a cynic, a Roman, not a Westerner, asks him what is truth and orders him to be killed knowing that he is innocent. Is the West Western when it has ceased to seek the truth? When it has substituted freedom, that freedom of which the enlightened ones boasted so much, when it has substituted freedom for licentiousness? Is the West Western when it has ceased to apply the law? Well, they are laws that are passed in parliaments and that are applied, but the law in the full sense, in the full sense of the word, which has to be applied to all, is the West Western when the unborn do not have their rights recognized and are killed in the womb of their mothers and some of them are cut up to be sold and do business with their small organs through transplants? Is the West Western? Does it have these three confluences, in this case that of the law, when not all are equal before the law, not only the unborn, but the discarded, those who are no longer productive? Is the West Western when fraternity, that is, that which our Lord Jesus Christ taught us and which in its germ was already contained in the Old Testament, is the West Western when that fraternity has disappeared as true fraternity because the existence of a common father is not recognized? How can there be fraternity if we do not have a common father? How can we be brothers and sisters if we do not have a common father? How can we be brothers if we don't recognize the existence of a God who is above all, who has created us and who loves us? Is the West Western when that fraternity, when love has been reduced to sex and when one is capable of accepting anything so that you can do whatever you want, even kill the innocent or even change the basic concept of family? Therefore, the question is if the West has ceased to be Western and if the men who live in that ancient West wonderful union of the three great currents, the Greek thought, the equality of all before the law brought by the Romans, and then, above all, the Judeo-Christian spirituality, is the West Western? However, it must be said that there is some reason for hope. For example, this week, the Wall Street Journal published a surprising editorial because in it, it claimed that the Supreme Court of the United States, which is debating whether abortion is a right or not, that is to say, whether abortion has to be approved by all states because it is a right, or whether abortion, on the contrary, is not and has to be left to the individual states to legislate. Well, the Wall Street Journal has said that the Supreme Court has to 
repeal the famous law that allowed abortion in the United States and leave it up to the states to legislate on this issue. It is not a decisive step forward because obviously what I would have liked, as many would have liked, is for abortion to be banned. But it is a step forward in so far as abortion will no longer be recognized as a human right. And this is truly a fundamental principle to save the West so that in this formerly Christian West, we are all equal before the law. We shouldn't be surprised that bombs fall. We shouldn't be surprised that those who throw the bombs represent themselves as Christians who are blessed by their patriarchs. We shouldn't be surprised because this is something that is very wrong and that has no justification whatsoever and that it's scandalous that a sector of the church blesses the dropping of bombs against the innocent. But we shouldn't be surprised that they do this when the West begins to look the other way while Ukraine is being raised to the ground and when the West has within itself the cancer that is undermining it with relativism, with a gender ideology, with abortion and also with the persecution suffered by those churches, few, practically the Catholic Church, that continue to say that God has to be in the first place in life and that religious freedom has to be respected. We have to try to save the West because it's our common home and we have to try to do it with our prayer and with our courage. Actually, it was St. Paul who was the first Western man and it was Pilate who first killed the West publicly and the ones who saved it were the martyrs of the Roman Colosseum. Until next week, God willing. If you wish to be up to date on what is happening in the church, you can do so on our news page, www.magnifica.tv. See you next week, God willing.